Thank you, Elma. So maybe we must then start looking at the reality of what is happening in South Africa. And, and how can we also look at that? So I'm just going to quickly share my screen again. So what is currently happening in South Africa? Now, all of you know, we still have a lot of provinces, although I hear there might only be five after a while, but currently we still have a lot of provinces. We have nine. In 2016, it was estimated that we had 55.91 million people in South Africa. We know it's a bit higher now. And if we look at the government health care, we know there's two trans-specific clinics, there's gender-affirming surgery, in Pumalanga and Western Cape, as well as a little bit in the Free State, and then one vaginoplasty in the Eastern Cape so far, but predominantly Gauteng and Western Cape. We know that there's hormones in the Western Cape, Eastern Cape, Free State, um, Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal, but nothing in the others if we look at government health care. And then we have mental health care. We also know that only 18% of people are on private health care and that gender affirming health care is mostly excluded from the space and the areas here. We know that there are WITS RHI clinics that we'll speak a bit later. And then we, Alma just spoke about PATHSA. But what we are very aware of is that there's not enough being done in South Africa. Now, PATHS uh, is an organization or path SA that looks at depathologization, decolonization, deimperialization, transforming of healthcare, and dismantling of power hierarchies. And, and Mershon will speak a bit later about this as well. But if we look at guidelines, we know that there is only international guidelines currently available on trans and gender affirming health care. Although, as Elma alluded to, there is currently also things happening in South Africa. And, and as a team, we are developing guidelines and we hope that it will be out early next year. But there's been a lot of exciting things happening also in healthcare and mental health care. And the Psychology Society of South Africa did develop some guidelines, although it's not treatment guidelines. And I'm going to hand over to Professor Jean now to speak around this, these guidelines and also what has been happening in trans and gender diversity from SISA's side. 